You came here 25 years ago. There were no planes at the airport. There was no roof on Union Station. There was an empty mall in downtown. All those things have changed. Yes, something good is happening in Worcester. The headlines say so. And so does Clark University economist John Brown. In Worcester, we've seen a real turnaround. The best evidence, says Brown, is found in Worcester's employment numbers. Surprisingly enough, since the Great Recession, Worcester really has seen accelerating employment growth. And so now we're way above what we were back in 2000. Among the other cities in the state that are similar to Worcester, Worcester ranks pretty high in terms of job creation, new employment, particularly the last couple of years. And that, of course, grows most everything else, including housing. Real estate prices are up 18% since 2016, and now there is money to be made in old, overlooked properties. Michael O'Brien is with Wynn Companies, a developer known for taking on abandoned, distressed structures. It's one of our specialties. Adaptively reuse these grand old buildings, factories, schools, and turn them into wonderful places to live, uh, places to run a business. This is one of their projects, 48 Water Street in the Canal District, built in 1890. Envelopes were made here. Later, it was a furniture store. It was not residential, but it is now, and this couple is moving in. It's a big move. We both currently live and work in Boston. We're gonna make the move out to Worcester. Ugh, the Boston commute. Factoring that in, Nathan Sabo and Julie Cohen still decided to buy a condo here. We had a loft in downtown Boston. We really liked the style, the industrial mixed-use type of neighborhood. And when we saw this building online, we really were taken with the style of it. One of the key features that drew us to the space was the 30-foot ceilings and the, the beams and the brick in the space. Um, back underneath here, you have the kitchen, a den, a full bath, and a dining area. We go up the stairs to a full master suite that has a full bath, two walk-in closets, and the laundry. We bought this place for $263,000, which uh, you couldn't touch a shoebox in Boston for these days. Included is a common room and a gym, too. We're making the bet that the prices aren't all the way up, and just comparatively for this type of space, we could get this space for about a quarter of what it would cost in downtown Boston. Will it pay off? Worcester actually is doing better than even some of the surrounding areas going to the east, which is typically a hotter property market than Worcester itself. You have to go pretty far closer to Boston to really get the same kinds of appreciation that you see in the Worcester zip code. That's actually a very promising development for the city as a whole. But it was more than just numbers that attracted Sabo and Cohen to Worcester's Canal District. When we walked around, checked out the neighborhood, we thought, wow, this is really cool. There's something neat going on here. There's a lot of energy and interesting things. For instance, a cross-section of trendy bars and restaurants within walking distance of Water, Green, and Harding Streets. Prompt in Place is a retail collective that includes the Birch Tree Bread Company featuring casual cafe fare. Time-honored establishments are also in the neighborhood mix. The Table Talk Pie Outlet, Good as Gold Coffee, and there's Mr. David Mizrahi out in front of his landmark deli, Weintraub's, founded in 1920. There's a lot going on here. Joe Petty is Worcester's mayor. You can see the momentum change. People are talking about us outside of Worcester for a change. It's all positive. The Boston people are talking about investing here. And people are coming to Worcester now because they see the growth. The public market is going to be opening right down the street at Kelly Square. We're really excited about that. So we can live a similar kind of lifestyle to what we had in downtown Boston, but do it here in Worcester. Another neighborhood business is blowing up on social media. Seven igloos heated all winter long for a snuggly private dining experience at Lock 50 Restaurant and Wine Bar. I've actually had to bring a person on full time just to answer the phone to reserve these igloos. Come for the igloos, but stay for the food. Owner Ed Russo. I would describe it as a contemporary American small place with a Mediterranean flair. But first, a visit to the bar. What's this drink? That we call the Padre. Padre, it's a bourbon with a little sweet vermouth, some citrus bitters, and we infuse the glass with cherry smoke. Great drink, we actually put it on the menu about a year or so ago, and it's been very popular, we can't take it off. Tonight, the kitchen is cooking up Spanish octopus, 
flatbread and gnocchi. Now, potato gnocchi was put on the menu from day one, which is almost three years ago. It is our number one selling dish. It has been. It's an incredible fluffy gnocchi with blue cheese. It's just, it's, it's decadent. It's delicious.